Escape Room Workers of Reddit. What's the most absurd things players have done? I interviewed for a job at an escape room. They told me that one of their standard instructions you must tell every group is to not stick things in electrical outlets because too many people did it. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. What's screwed up is, I went to an escape room in LA where one of the puzzles was literally to stick a fork in a socket. Everyone told me I was insane when I suggested it, but two of the prongs were folded back and there was fake soot around the fake outlet. I did it and boom, gave us the next clue. I thought it was super stupid though. Why risk people learning that behavior and trying it somewhere else? Story 3. Escape room enthusiast here. We spent far more time than I care to admit trying to figure out what the hell the numbers written in Sharpie on the underside of the rug in the middle of the room meant. Turns out they were an inventory number from the thrift store the designer bought the thing from, and nobody else had ever noticed them before. We still won, but that wasted a lot of our time. What a flex to sneak in there right at the end. Oh, we wasted so much time on that rug. Oh, what a weird red herring that we created ourselves, but we still won though. Story 4. In the Netherlands, there's this prison escape room where everyone is a prisoner and you have to escape prison. It is done in an actual ancient prison. There are about 300 participants and 85 actors, mostly prison guards and some prisoners. They have over 15 storylines which you can follow and there are other inmates, actors, which will lead those storylines and send you on quests. Coming back to the question though, at the beginning they warned everyone that no physical contact is allowed because during the first time, people actually would threaten each other to get money and guards have been attacked. Also, they had to warn people that you weren't supposed to try climbing the 50-foot prison wall. Story 5. First thing I had to learn working at an escape room. Everything, yes, everything in the room was going to be dismantled, pulled on, or messed with in some way. Have a screwdriver in the room? Maybe there's a clue in the light switch cover. Black light? Must have to take it completely apart. TV for clues? Must have to unplug slash change inputs. And anything not nailed down is bound to be broken. Story 6. Not sure if this counts. I did an escape room with a group of friends. At the end, you found a flash drive which was supposed to be plugged into a computer. We opened the document and there were instructions to print. We got print and the printer gave us an out of ink error. We assumed this was part of the game and started looking for a magenta cartridge. Then an employee slipped into the room, replaced the cartridge and told us to hit print again. Apparently it was not part of the game. They just ran out of ink. Having ink being part of an escape room sounds really expensive. Like what if some idiots just go in there and start printing like hundreds of sheets? I mean, I guess you just stop it, but still. Story 7. I don't work at one, but my coworker went to one last year and his story was hilarious. He's a really serious guy from Boston. Got talked into going to one with his wife and a few old friends that had come down for vacation. He said as soon as they walked in, he saw a broom that looked completely out of place, so he grabbed it. He thought they would need it at some point. They made it out of the first room. They go to the second room and he still got the broom. He swears it was just too out of place to not be part of the puzzle at some point. They make it through the second room. The third room, they get stuck. They're reading the clues over and over, and he gets fixated on the broom, while everyone else is searching the room. He's looking it over, up, and down, checking the handle for markings, mind you he has terrible nearsight vision, and checking the bristles. Time's running out and he's arguing with his wife at this point that the broom has the final clue. Time runs out, they walk out, and the crew is just dying laughing at him. Someone just left the broom in there by mistake, nothing less, nothing more. He carried that damn broom through three rooms. He got a good laugh about it later, but was embarrassed at the time. It was a great story he told the next morning at work. Story 8. One time, a group was trying to figure out the code to a locked compartment. So this huge guy in the group decided it was a waste of time and tried to rip off the compartment door with his bare hands. He was almost successful, but we had to stop him before he could do further damage. He didn't even understand what was wrong. Another one happened where a group was handcuffed and they couldn't find the key. The game master was trying to give them clues to find the key, but they still couldn't find it. So one group member thought it would be best to use his leg. There was a table in the room with some items on it. He proceeded to knock over all the items with one kick. That group didn't win. Story 9. I went to one where there were three identical rooms, which teams competed in at the same time. If you finished, you then got to go watch the other teams and listen to them. Our team did pretty well and we got to watch the other two teams try to complete it. Anyway, there was this one lock which was a number combination and you solved it by finding some sheet music in a book with five notes on it, which corresponded to numbers. The piece was entitled The Key or something similar, so you knew you needed it for the lock. Anyway, this other team, instead of converting the numbers and putting the combination in, chanted this five note tune at the lock. When it didn't work, they tried again and again, and then someone else tried. 
This went on for 10 minutes and got louder and louder. Eventually, the game master stepped in and told them that was not the solution to the clue. Apparently, they were the first and only team to ever do that. Story 10. Not terribly ridiculous, but me and the husband love them and wanted to share our love with them with our family. When we got out of the escape room, the super amazing nuclear explosion shake room in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the room operator was cracking up laughing. I guess at one point, in order to get keys or clues, my overenthusiastic husband had picked up my eight-year-old nephew by the ankles upside down and was shoving him in barrels. I had no idea he was doing this, but the operator was dying. Story 11. Oh my god, my time has come. People do the dumbest crap in escape rooms constantly, but that's the whole point, and it's usually in good fun. The best part of my old escape room job was that it was literally right next door to a brothel. People would frequently come to our door not realizing they were one door over from where they wanted to be, and ask, Hey, how much? Me and my customer service voice, Well, it depends on how many people you bring. It's $40 each if you're a group of two and goes down to 32 if you're in a group of eight. Usually, we recommend groups of four to six people. That seems to be the sweet spot. Their looks of horror will make me laugh forever. Story 12. Obligatory, not a worker, just on a lot of escape rooms and chatted with the staff. These are the dumbest people I've been told about. 1. One of the rooms is based on Jumanji and has a waterfall with real water in it. Enough people have tried to drink the water, they had to tell people not to do it in their opening spiel. 2. One of the rooms has a bunch of museum-style display cases with glass covering the top with different puzzles inside. One of them has sand in it and has small holes in the top. Someone tried to tip over the display case and get the sand out so they could read the hidden message. When the game master told them to stop doing that, she stopped momentarily and then tried again two minutes later. The game master told her if she did it again, she'd be kicked out. And the woman said, just making sure you're paying attention. 3. People constantly try to pull up floorboards or tear down wallpaper in the horror-themed room. Even after they're explicitly told there's nothing hidden there. And warned not to do it or they'll get fined for the damages. Story 13. I was the player here. This was a horror-themed escape house with people in costumes screaming at you from time to time with chainsaws and crap. We were in a room with an open jail cage and we knew the next clue was in that cage, but it's pretty obvious the cage was designed to scare the crap out of whoever was inside. I waltzed in and the cage door slammed shut behind me. I took the note and slipped myself out between the bars. We waited for several minutes until I slipped back into the cage so the game could progress. Later on, the workers told us they were really surprised when I had slipped out of their trap, and they were trying to figure out what to do next. Story 14. Attended a Saw series-themed escape room with my significant other, and some randoms since the room required 4-6. to six. We get locked in to start, chained to fixtures like the dark room scene from the movie, lights are off. As soon as the thing starts, one of the randos says, I have a gun in case we need to shoot someone. I thought he was joking, and we all did. Eventually, the lights turn back on, and he pulls out a real gun and sits it in the sink, and then says, I'm leaving the gun in the sink in case something happens to me. It's for everyone. This guy thought he was signing up to be in it like a live-action Saw movie, huh? I get being prepared, but that's really prepared. Also, you're super not supposed to have that in escape room. Don't you put all your stuff in, in lockers or whatever? How did this man manage to get a gun inside? Story 15. I was the dude in the room. It was my first 10-year-old brother's birthday party, and children are dumb as crap. It was themed around a nuclear power station that was going to blow up the town, and essentially what happened was we had an hour to complete three rooms. We took 45 minutes to get through the first because kids kept throwing crap around. One guy got freaked out thinking it was real and pressed the button to end the room. And my dad shouted at him, so he took a tantrum and freaking locked himself in a drawer. Then, because the kids can't organize crap, we had to hunt for the most stressful three minutes of my life for the key. And then we got through and it was sort of okay from there because a lot of kids up and left the room. Never again. Never. Ever. Again. Story 16. I work at an escape room and too many customers come to play and then put their torches in their mouth disgusting. We've had a couple get in the room and start to get frisky instead of playing the game. Had one who was super drunk who just started to pee in the corner of a room. Another lady who had been drinking decided to stay in the room and puke everywhere, and then put props over the piles of puke instead of leaving the room to go to the toilet, and many others. Story 17. I'll weigh in with my mildly amusing escape room anecdote. Not that absurd, more anticlimactic. This was actually a break-in format where you were supposed to recover some sort of locked-up MacGuffin. 
We were really close and the next step evidently was to unlock a door. We solved the puzzle that we figured would allow us to do this, but then when we tried to open the door, it wouldn't open. So for the remaining 15 minutes or so, we scramble frantically looking for more clues to figure out how to open this damn door but failed. When we asked about it afterwards, the guy was confused, because the last puzzle we solved was the one that should have opened the door. After some back and forth, it turns out the door just has a bit of a funny handle. Not part of the puzzle in any way, just a door that works different from what you're used to. That was all that stood between us and sweet victory. Story 18. Not an escape room worker and not absurd, but funny. I was at a heist-themed escape room over Christmas, which featured a bit where you have to maneuver past the lasers and get a diamond. If you tripped the laser, the display case would close and you needed to go back to the start of the room to reset everything. After we finished the room, we were told about a group of four elderly women who just walked through the lasers and had one of the groups stay at the beginning, resetting the trip. Absolute geniuses. I can just imagine it, the cackling as they break the system. You know how escape rooms have that, like, leaderboard type of thing in the main room? I wonder if they were, like, if they were eligible for that. Because they didn't solve the puzzle in the intended way, but they solved the puzzle. Story 19. So, this isn't necessarily absurd on the player side, but instead from the game master. One time our players were doing the bank heist theme, done in the dark and you have headlamps. And about four puzzles in, one of my employees realized they had an item in their pocket still. So we brain blasted for a couple minutes and decided the best course of action was to pretend the employee was a security guard and walk around the bank. So we went over the room intercom and warned them to hide, because it looked like the security guard was coming to them. Seeing all of the players hide in complete fear was priceless. One guy wasn't even hiding, he was just sprawled up against the wall. Our security guard walked around, said, Hmm, everything seems good, and placed the item down on the desk. It was legendary, and they didn't suspect a thing. Story 20. Obligatory, not an escape room worker, but a participant. Once I went to an escape room with my mom, dad, mom's best friend forever, and her two sons. The premise of the room was a bank heist. We start off trying to break in from a small room after solving clues there. Afterwards, we go to another room via the bricks in the wall, solve the clues there, open the vault, take as much as we can. Meanwhile, the alarm starts to blare and we need to get out quickly via another brick wall. In the second room, there were a couple of murdered dummies and an actor, who was playing dead. He was the one who sounds the alarm after we managed to break into the vault. Well, everyone was trying to get into that aforementioned vault. I was sitting there with my empty money bag and decided to loot the dead bodies, including the actor either for more clues or valuables. We were pretending to be robbers, after all. Sadly, all the bodies had nothing on them. After all is over and done with, we took the money bags and managed to bolt. We sit there and talk about the room, pretty thrilled. That was when the game master comes in, laughing his butt off in tow with the actor who looks pretty bewildered. What they told us was that during the three years at the time this escape room was active, nobody had tried to frisk the bodies. Not to mention so thoroughly. I checked every pocket, even took the shoes off the dummies. Did not go that far with the actor though. I felt really bad. I didn't realize the actor wasn't a dummy. He was lying on his face during the heist, and I didn't take his shoes off because I noticed the paper with the code on a shelf close to the body. I was mortified. I'd even checked his back pockets. My group was freaking laughing their butts off. Guy was pretty young too and new to the job, so I guess we were both pretty embarrassed. I can just imagine that training session. It sounds like the perfect thing that the actor would bring up during the training and the game master is like, no, no, that that never has happened. And then, first day on the job, what do you know? Story 21. Not a worker, but a participant. My friend thought the solution to a puzzle was to press on the corners of several framed pictures in a specific sequence. The box wasn't unlocking itself from what he thought was the correct solution, so he pressed on the corners harder. Needless to say, one of the frames broke and the glass panel covering the picture fell out and shattered on the ground. We had to call the workers in to help clean up the glass shards. Didn't get in any trouble and we ended up escaping the room though. Story 22. I'm not an escape room worker, but I went to a horror-based escape room once where we had a certain amount of time to complete it or one of the workers would come in dressed up to frighten us and tell us that we had lost. When we entered one of the rooms, we saw that there was a shelf full of old VHS tapes of different movies, one of which was related to the escape room. So we put it in the VHS player, got some clues and continued to investigate, but we came to a halt. When we began to run out of time, one of my friends I was with in the escape room had the great idea of trying to play the rest of the VHS tapes. Most of them were blank, but suddenly one of them started playing a slightly broken children's movie that wasn't at all related to the escape room. And we started to panic because we couldn't take the tape out or turn it off. And suddenly we hear one of the workers who was monitoring us and had a speaker connected to our room laugh his butt off. 
laughing like I haven't heard anyone laugh before at these dumb, scared-as-crap 15-year-olds watching a distorted children's movie in a dark, scarily decorated room. The guy felt so bad he gave us extra time, I suspect to see more of our screw-ups, before finally giving us a scare. Story 23. Maybe a better question to ask would be, escape room enthusiasts, what's the most absurd thing you've done to win? If that was the question, I would say that I was in a room with a group of six. We were separated into two groups and we had to get out of the jail cell and into a second room. Anyway, there was an electric panel with jumper cables used to complete the circuit. We had two of the three needed, so while the other five were working on the puzzle, my ingenuity took over, and I found something else to short out the circuit and open the door. Sadly, we were all still in the cells. The guy running the room for us came in and asked how we got the door open. When I told him, he said that this is the first time anyone has done that. We escaped with several minutes to go, but not before we accidentally opened the last clue prematurely. I think that they were glad to be rid of us. Story 24. Oh god, I have a lot of stories. I worked for various escape rooms for a few years. You would be amazed at the amount of players who want to bring their own tools into the game. Screwdrivers, lockpicks, etc. You have to nail everything down to or players will absolutely destroy it. The drunker they are when they start, the worse the damage is. We once had a player literally try to tear off the drywall because they thought there had to be something behind it. In one of our rooms, we had this big, heavy-duty picture frame screwed into the wall with 4-inch nails, and they still managed to pry it off. We've had doors taken off hinges, kids trying to crawl inside vents, the list goes on. I don't know if it counts as absurd, but one of the most unique experiences I've had was a wedding proposal. The guy worked it out with us ahead of time. We put the ring and a note he wrote professing his love behind some bars in the last puzzle you unlock before getting out of the room. His girlfriend actually ended up fitting her hands between the bars and got the note out way early. But the guy was still running around trying to solve stuff because he didn't notice. And she was just sitting there reading it, starting to bawl. She said yes, by the way. I'm very glad OP told us that she said yes, cause uh... <laughs> With starting to ball, that could go either way. Story 25. The last room of this setup contained four puzzles, where each gave you a four-letter combination of A, B, C, and D. There was a wood box on the wall open at the front that had four laser lights passing horizontally through it, each marked by one of the letters. If you blocked one of the lasers with your hand, a sound was played. The puzzle was that once you solve all four puzzles and figure out their order, you essentially play the song on the laser box, and at the end of the song, we open the main door to let them out. Anyway, a group walks in and starts looking around. One girl goes straight to the lasers and starts playing around, noticeably enjoying making the sounds. I kid you not, she played the exact 16-letter song correctly, completely by accident, before any of her mates solved the other puzzles. We stopped the time there, but let them keep playing to solve the puzzles and actually figure it out, before we opened the door. Told her to get a lottery ticket after they came out. Story 26. Obligatory not an escape room worker. But a friend of mine and I checked one out in Denver, and while we were waiting to go, we were chatting up with the worker about any funny stories they've witnessed. She told us that one time a couple had come in who were on a first date. Since they could overhear everything, they found out the plan was to do an escape room and then go get dinner and drinks afterward. Seems like a pretty nice date. Have fun at an escape room and then you have something to bond over dinner and drinks. It's a pretty risky first date though as escape rooms can bring out the beast in people. So to bring someone you don't know, take some trust that you two have hit it off, at least verbally or textually, prior to going. It turns out that the beast that this girl unleashed manifested itself in complete disdain for the whole situation. Apparently, this guy had picked up the girl from her house for the date. Seems trusting. The guy through all this was very nice, they said, and she was already hammered. They get into the escape room and she proceeds to just sit in the corner while the guy tries to figure out the dial rotations on a toaster oven. Asking questions like, So, what are some places you want to travel to next? She wouldn't respond to the questions and sort of just belittled him for not being able to figure out the clues, while she just sat there. And sat there she did, even when the guy got into the second room. The employee said it was like getting a voyeuristic view into a dumpster fire of a first date in a time-pressured environment where both participants were quite literally unable to escape the situation. At least until the time ran out. When they were let out, the girl proceeded to thank the employees for a wonderful time. Though it was clear she didn't understand the part about how the employees are watching everything to help give clues and whatnot. 